Hey guys, Hobbs back. Yes, I know it has been a long time since I last released the video. Uh, I'll probably talk about that a little bit more in the description why I haven't. Let's just put it this way, school and work eats up my brain power and it's hard to play. But yeah, as the title suggests, I've been playing a lot of Planet Side, and Planet Side is a big team-based game. So, and I remember promising you guys a basic teamwork guide, and so, you know, looking at Planet Side and me being completely addicted to it lately, I've been kind of trying to, you know, piece together, like, a good teamwork guide inside of Hawken, like, because I know inside Planet Side there's, like, small squad, like, tactics that I've used, especially even in larger platoons and scales like that, that actually work really well, especially, like, in the vehicle gameplay, which could essentially would work with Hawken's vehicle mechs, since they are, like, basically the vehicles inside of Planet Side. But, yeah, I just, uh, this is gonna be a basic teamwork guide, you know, small squad optics, like a mentality. Essentially, what I want to teach you guys is kind of how I think. Uh, when it comes to like teamwork and stuff like that because I know most people they kind of just go through and just uh, You know shoot whatever the hell's moving right in front of them, which you know it, it, I mean that that's one play style you can play it But for and, and I'm not dissing that I mean one of the best players I know his name's miracle That's basically how he plays he sees something he shoots it and he's actually a really good player But for some people like me who like to act a little bit more tactfully try to move a bit more as a coordinated team I'm gonna help you to guys to kind of like, you know, understand my thought process, you know, how, uh, you know, basically how I succeed inside of games, even if my team is some quote-unquote uncoordinated, I can help, uh, actually give you the tools to try and, you know, beat, get the, ah, man, I'm stumbling over my words here, I'm gonna give you the tools to be able to coordinate your own team, so to speak, like you can kind of help from the sidelines, and I don't know if you guys ever seen my playstyle video, but I talk about like the secret wingman thing, and yes, essentially in this thing I'll teach you how to secret wingman and just basic things you'll want to know about team, uh, about teamwork. And so without much further ado and just me blabbing on, let's get right into the guide. As far as a teamwork guide is concerned, if I had to sum it up really really quickly in about four or five seconds, I'd just give you this. It's dangerous to go alone, take this! And yeah, if you know where that's from, you're pretty awesome. If you don't, that's okay. But again, that's kind of just getting the point in that you do want to be able to stick with your teammates. However, when you do stick with your teammates, you do want to be careful. And then you have to make sure you're using your situational awareness. Not just for enemies, but with allies as well. Because you can't just go right through your allies because your allies can be just as much of an obstruction to you as the enemies are. And so what you need to be able to do is keep a good awareness and like on the radar, see where your allies are at all times, and be aware of them. Because you don't want to accidentally have to dodge, and then it turns out your allies right there, so your dodge just gets blocked, or you can't try to go through that escape route. And also try to pay attention to where your teammates are. Like if you see uh, one of their icons, you see one of the, the, your teammates, their names is rapidly approaching you, Maybe you should try to step out of the way, step out of the main path, because they're probably trying to flee. And, you know, I mean, did you try to help keep them alive? You want to try to keep the road clear and watch where your allies are. And it, I know it is a little bit tough, but it is a big important of being able to play on a team. Also, simple things like when you see somebody repairing, give him a bit of cover until he's finished repairing, and then after that, you can start repairing yourself, and then he'll be able to provide cover for you as you repair. It's just simple things like this. Trying to help your teammates survive as long as possible instead of you just trying to randomly go after kills. It's little things like that that'll help keep your teammate alive for much, much longer, and in the long run, will help your team succeed. And yes, I got caught with my pants down, and I got an achievement for that. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing. But yeah. <laughs> but that's essentially just one of the basic things you want to be able to do, is just recognize where your teammates are, see where they need help, and also you can see your he the health of your teammates. If you see a teammate who's low on health, and he's not that far from you, go help him out, intercept the person who's chasing him, and you'll, ease you'll get an easy kill right there. And things like that kind of goes into that seek that, uh, secret wingman type uh, gameplay that I was talking about. I, uh, but as far as like, you know, positioning and formation, that's the word. Formation when you're running with a team. That's actually important and it's not something that many people think about. But usually when you're running with a team, you want to position yourself in a way that you're not directly next to another mech. You definitely do not want to clump up. Especially because in this game, the, all these mechs mobilities, even tech, even like uh, the heavy mechs, all your positioning, you should definitely try to keep a lot of space between you and your teammates. 
not a not a lot, but at least a dodge's worth of distance. You like you don't want to be standing direct. You don't want to be standing directly to the left or the right of a teammate. Uh, that's at least one dodge distance of between them because they got to be able to dodge and try to avoid incoming fire And you don't want to be directly behind them either that way They can you know turn around and then bail if they need to in a certain situation So the best place to do it is actually you know diagonally to the left or the right slightly behind or slightly in front It depends if you're trying to lead or if you're trying to follow I tend to follow so I'm usually diagonally to the left or the right of my uh, of the person who I'm following and uh, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but generally when you run in a team, at first, you know, you start in the six. You start like, you know, all six of you are kind of close together. At that point, you kind that's not too bad when all six of you are kind of close at first. But as soon as you start an engagement, you guys need to spread out and, you know, have at least like a, there's like, just imagine like a circle around your mech and around all your friendly mechs that is like at least one heavy mech's distance. Uh, at least a one heavy mech distance between you and your like uh, an out around an ally or like a radius or whatever. Just try not to get inside of that too much if you if at all possible. I mean, if you need to get in there just to like maneuver and stuff like that, it's okay. But don't linger too close to an ally because they need to be able to move around and all that. Unless you're a technician, if you're a technician, then you should just try to you know stay behind. Generally, just try to stay behind. Uh, your allies but other than that you want to have a little bit of space between you and a friendly mech because you don't want to be blocking his mobility and you need to be able to shoot too so you don't want to be standing directly behind them and also if you're at a choke point you don't want to gather up at choke points because that's just it's just gonna be a big big mess maybe one or two mechs on either side of like the, the corners of a choke point That'll help to cover it plenty. But other than that, other mechs should try to be hanging back, or they should be trying to flank. In fact, you really don't need more than three mechs on a single choke point, because you only really need the two to be able to kind of cover those two corners, and then maybe one to can cycle through as they're repairing and all that stuff. And, like, you know, I guess the best way to describe it when you're moving is to try and stay, like, in kind of a V-shape. You know how you see ducks do that all the time? That's usually the best way to try and stay in a formation. Especially like in threes and stuff like that. And when you do split off as a team, always try to stay together as much as you can. But if you do split off, either run with two sets of three or three pairs. So essentially, try to avoid situations where you end up being all on your own. If you need to lone wolf it, then play much more carefully. But in most situations, or most ideal situations, try to stay with a buddy. And if you're on a team that feels like really uncoordinated, just find someone who looks like they're decent enough at the game, they don't have too low of a score, you don't see them dying constantly, just kind of shadow them and be like their secret wingman. Just, you know, kind of stay behind them and to the left, help giving them supporting fire, cover them when they're repairing or looks like they're, you know, trying to retreat and overheat. Just try to look out for things and try to just give yourself the mentality of just trying to keep your teammate alive not so much like you know just trying to go for kills and oh kd ratio ooh. do your best to try and help your team stay alive that's usually how i tend to play and usually works out for the better especially in uh, objective based games just keeping teammates alive do go a long way in trying to help your team but yeah when you're trying to run and going back to like the uh, trios or pairs trios are best when it's uh things like it is best for more objective games because you want more people like staying on an objective and then you can have a trio try to maybe flank the enemy get behind them dig them out or something like that the, then pairs tend to work best in team deathmatch cases that way because they tend to be much more mobile game uh, much more mobile game type where the, the front lines moving all over the place and yeah it, it's just better to move in pairs that way that way you can uh, move from much more different directions generally the best way to try and do it is to have, uh, you know, sometimes you can have one pair, you know, pushing like, you know, where the actual front is. Maybe a second one trying to, you know, maybe help set up a crossfire from a similar position, but, you know, kind of along the same area. Or, and then you have that third pair getting behind the enemy. And you, like, you could just have like, you know, a single guy do it, but I find that pairs work a little bit better because then, you know, just in case something bad happens, you know, you still got backup. You're not all on your own. So, like I said, the buddy system works wonders inside of Hawk and it can be very, very deadly. Because, you know, as I said, a lone mech is 
oftentimes will end up dead unless you're facing another, another lone mech. And the chances of that happening in a team game aren't as high as you running into like maybe two or three enemies. Now, all this stuff I'm talking about, I know it's a lot of information I'm throwing out, but like with experience, I've just learned that like all this stuff is just playing in the back of my mind or like stuff that I'm looking out for while I'm playing. As I said, you know, trying to look for teammates. Okay, let's see. Are my teammates fleeing? Where are they at? If I need to run, where should I go to try and, you know, get back to my teammates and, uh, you know, hopefully be able to retreat there. Or if I see someone coming down, like towards my direction, I see that they're fleeing. There's probably going to be an enemy behind them. I can look on my radar and check that. Okay, and like, should I intercept that? I can help him, I'll keep him alive, and then I'm like, okay, let's see, my allies are attacking this point, is it a good chance for me to, is there enough of them for me to, like, you know, try and flank, or if I see one of my friendlies, he's always, you know, he's just going off on its own, I don't just say, oh, screw him, I actually go like, well, okay, I need to keep this guy alive, otherwise we're probably gonna lose, no matter, you know, how much I may or may not like the guy, or if my, or if he's new or not, I mean, I might as well give the guy backup, because I know for sure if I don't give the guy backup, he's probably not going to last long. And obviously, keeping my teammates alive is obviously in my benefit in most in most cases, so it's just, I guess basically it's just try to keep your teammates alive is essentially like, I'd say what the first lesson is. Just make sure you keeping aware of your teammates, seeing where they are, trying to keep them alive, and it'll generally help to your benefit. It, it won't always it won't always win because obviously you know some teams might be more pulled together and it could do better than you. But this is generally how I kind of play, or uh, this is usually my thought process as I'm playing in most team games. But I admit, I sometimes I do just decide you know what screw it, I'll just go lone wolf and then just see what kind of damage I'll do. But generally, this is how my thought process like just tends to move as I'm you know trying to move with the unit trying to work with a team and all that and then there's gonna be a giant fail right here where I'm trying to duel eventual mech I accidentally shoot myself and I'm just saying screw it I'm, I might as well just kill myself but nope I failed and he still got me but yeah I hope this guide was able to help teach you guys a bit more about how to try to move as a unit try to be with a team and if you guys are looking for more of a guide on how to be a lone wolf well I don't know why you watched this far but Hey, maybe you learned a couple things, and, you know, I might do another guide a bit more on this subject. If you guys want a bit more clarity, just let me know what you guys want to hear about. I just kind of wanted to get a little guide out, out there, just teaching you, like, basic things you want to think about, or at least that I usually think about when I'm trying to move in a team. Hopefully, again, it helped you try to understand, maybe help you move it better as a unit. Although, personally, I really wish voice comms was working in Hawken, that way to make moving as a team a lot easier, but yeah, that's gonna be it for this video, I guess I'll see you guys next time, as soon as I get one, like, comment, subscribe if you like what you saw, but for now, this is Hobbs, signing off.